Hey, what's going on YouTube family, Set Apart Gardens family? Hey man, sorry that I haven't been hitting y'all up with videos. You know, I caught COVID, I was sick for a little while, I was down, but I'm up now. Uh, so, it's time to get back on it. So today, I got something good in store for y'all. I'm gonna butcher one of my goats. Uh, long story short, uh, the reason why I'm butchering my goats is this breed of goat, um, this is not the breed I, <coughs> excuse me, this is not the breed that I want to go forward with. Um, definitely a great learning experience with these goats. They're good goats. Um, today I'm just going to butcher one of them and I'm going to butcher another one later on this week. But I'm going to take y'all on along with, on the journey so y'all can see how I do it. Um, put some meat in the refrigerator for my family. You know what I'm saying? And all that good stuff. I always remember, a sharp knife is a humane knife. All right, so now what we're gonna do after we have them butchered is we're gonna get them up on the gambrel and I'm gonna show you guys how we do that, all right? All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna skin around the leg area and I'm gonna bring my skinning knife and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, skin between the leg up into the torso area and I'm gonna peel some of that skin back because the ultimate goal is to get in between the joint, the Achilles joint, which is one of the strongest joints you can get in between to put that gambrel in between so that gambrel can hold up that goat. Never, ever, ever cut through that Achilles joint. That joint behind the leg, behind the hind legs, don't ever cut through that because you won't be able to get them up on the gamber or hang them up. Um, you have to, you have to make an incision in between that joint and make a hole like I, like you just saw me do. And now I'm gonna put them up on the gamber between that hole that I made and the Achilles joint. And now I'm just pulling them up on the gamber. Just pulling them up. All right, so once you have them up, now all you're gonna do is just skin them. You're gonna skin around that leg, you wanna peel that skin back. Another thing too is you want to make sure that there's no poop coming out of the rectum or anything like that. And you just skin around the legs and you just keep going. And now you see where around the neck area, around the front legs, and you're just skinning around. That's all you're doing. You're just skinning around. And also you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna bring them uh bring your knife and skin down around those front legs and just keep on going all right so got them all skinned up now it's time to gut them uh this right here this is a mouse bird. This is a mouse bird skinning knife. This little, this little part right here is a lifesaver, and I'm gonna show you why. Because when you're going down the gutter, when you're going down the gutter, usually you will have to hold the knife inwards and slide down and guide your finger. But with this, all you gotta do is pull straight down. It's not gonna puncture any other organs or none of that. So it's just slide down and the guts fall right out. It's so easy. Um, so you guys see what I'm talking about. Make sure you have a bucket to catch the guts. So what you're gonna do is right up here, you're gonna just cut right here, make a little slit. Boom. You see all the guts? Just come right out. See how easy that was? All right, so now you wanna cut around in the rectum because there's gonna be a tube full with little pebbles of poop. You don't wanna get on your meat, so you're gonna cut around that and pull that down, just like you see me doing right here. And you're gonna pull all those guts and organs and everything, you're gonna pull those down into the bucket. Now you have to go in and you have to get the lungs and the windpipe. As you see me pulling the windpipe and the lungs out, there's the windpipe and the lungs right there. And now you just want to spray around inside, get all that extra blood and all that stuff out of there. And, you know, just clean around on the inside. That's all you want to do. All right, now we have them on the table. Now those front legs, those shoulder areas, we're going to cut around and get those shoulders off. All right, now 
the hind legs. We're gonna cut around, we're gonna saw through the middle to kind of split that in half. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue to cut around. Now it was hard, so what I had to do is I had to lay it against the table and, and pop that joint out and, and cut around that leg to get it off. We're gonna have to do the same thing with this one. We're gonna have to pop that joint out of place and we're gonna have to twist it a little bit just to get that joint off and get that cut off and everything. Now, the belly fat, we're gonna have to cut that belly fat. That belly fat, I mean, you can you can cook it up, you can use it for baking, you can smoke it, you can do anything you wanna do with it. Now, the little extra stomach lining, you're gonna cut that off and you're gonna put that to the side. I don't use that, I just usually throw that away. Now with the ribs. The ribs are really kind of the tougher part. Oh, I'm sorry, not the ribs, the saddle. You gotta cut the saddle off. Then you get to the ribs. Now with the ribs, you're gonna cut in between those ribs. So one side of the ribs, right, this side right here, I was able to do with my boning knife. I was able to get the ribs off. As you'll see, it, was, it wasn't too much of a big deal. As you can see, they're coming off pretty easily. But with the other side, it wasn't so easy. So with the other side, as you're gonna see, it's gonna be kind of a little struggle with it. So eventually, I'm gonna have to get my hand saw and saw those saw those ribs off from that side. So with the ribs, I usually just cut those up into pieces and I just throw those into some curry goat um, as I do with all the other pieces, but the ribs are especially good. So I just use my hand saw and cut those ribs off. And then I finish it off with my boning knife. And now after you've cut those ribs off, now you have the neck and you have the, uh, the uh, torso area. Not the torso, I'm sorry. You have the shoulder area. These are all the cuts I got right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap, well, I'm not gonna wrap them up. I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator and let the, the, the muscles and the meat relax because right now they're so tensed up um, and, and it'll make the meat tough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refrigerate it and let it age a bit in the refrigerator, let that meat relax, and then I'm gonna cut it up um, because ultimately all these cuts, well, most of these cuts are gonna be curry goat. Um, that's usually how I do my goats when I butcher them. I just make them into curry goat. Uh, honestly, I wanted to make this video because a lot of times, well, not even a lot of times, most of the time, we just go to a grocery store and get most of our meat, most of our food, and we have no con no connection with our food. And I want to show what it's like to actually have a connection with your food because when you it's, it's a difference when you butcher something when you raise something when you've seen it alive when you fed it when you uh gave it the best that you can give it gave it the best hay gave it the best feed let it roam around and eat natural stuff it's a difference between that and just going to the grocery store and picking up meat that you just see in the grocery store because you have no idea how that cow lived or how that goat lived or how that sheep lived or how that chicken or turkey lived you have no idea but when you actually do it yourself with whatever your food is going to be whether it's going to be chicken whether it's going to be turkey beef lamb goat whatever it is when you see it being raised up when you fed it when you've had personal dealings with it and when you butcher it yourself that's a deeper connection and there's a deeper appreciation for your food um i feel like the reason why we take our food for granted so much now is because it's so easily accessible. But you gotta think, prior to these modern times, if you go back hundreds and thousands of years ago, this is how people live. And they appreciated their food because they had to invest in every meal. Nowadays, the only investment we have in every meal is going to work, getting money, trading that money for the food that we get. And as a result, we've gotten so detached from it. We've gotten so detached from it. And, and, and honestly, I just wanted to bring awareness, just, just if you can, just try to find a way that you can start a garden. I mean, it can, it, you can start with your vegetables. That's another thing. We go to the grocery store and just pick up vegetables all the time. And we have, we, we don't know what farm it was raised on most of the time. We don't know, you know, if it was pesticides, herbicides used in it. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? But if we start our own garden and we plant that seed and we water that seed daily and we make sure uh, uh, we weed around it and we make sure that we, we harvest that seed at the right time or harvest that vegetable or that fruit at the right time then that's a different appreciation for your food. It's the same thing with the meat that you eat. 
you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to make this video to bring awareness, to have a connection with your food. And, 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 and just to show how we've gotten so disconnected from our food and how we just go to the grocery store and just, you know, voila, there's meat there. But it had to come from somewhere. So, you know, I hate to go on and on and on, but that's why I wanted to make this video. I hope this video really helped you guys. If you like this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, for more content, I'll be uploading videos two or three times a week now. Uh, so, uh, if you guys could hit that like and subscribe button for me, I appreciate it. And I just want to say peace and blessings. Money gone. Love me when my money gone. A lot of niggas gangsta.